Hello Internet, I'm Scarecrow85 and this is Hocko Life. This is a, so obviously I'm going to compare it to Animal Crossing, just look at it. But it's, uh, it's kind of its own game to be fair, but yeah, obviously this is very much inspired by Animal Crossing and it's very similar in many ways. Obviously you're probably wondering if it's any good. So I'm going to take a look at it, uh, I've been playing it now for about three days in real time. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about it, yeah, because it's interesting I think. So, Hocko Life is quite similar to Animal Crossing. You start off arriving in this town, you end up being a kind of town planner. Your job is just to revamp the town, build things, settle new people in the town. It's very similar to what you experienced from Animal Crossing. There are some major differences, though. Uh, one of them is obviously the style. It's a little bit more generic, I'd say. It's not quite as quirky or as charming as Animal Crossing. And the animal people are a bit peculiar looking. I've decided in my headcanon that these are definitely definitely humans wearing animal heads because <laughs> that's what they look like the cat doesn't have a tail it's just a dude with a cat head on and actually i find that really quite funny i'm totally cool with it <laughs> i just really like this place you get to customize your character at the start of the game and throughout the game you can change your clothing eventually you'll unlock the ability to uh, draw and create patterns and uh, same as animal crossing you can create your own clothing you can also create your own objects but we'll get to that in a minute there are lots of things to do around the town you'll get your own house at the start but you can change it you can beef it up you can decorate the inside the interior of it obviously um, but there are things to do you can go bug catching Bug catching is pretty cool. Uh, whenever you grab any animal in this game, it goes straight into your book. You don't have to take it to the museum or anything like that. There isn't a museum. As I say, this is a... I think this was made by, like, one person. Like, it's a smaller project. So don't be expecting a full... You know, the quality and, and detail and size of a full Nintendo AAA franchise. This is a smaller affair. Uh, there are loading times between areas. You know, it's not just one big open world. It's, it's a decent-sized map. Um... And you can teleport between areas once you unlock the uh, shortcuts as well, which is a really nice touch. Uh, so yeah, bug catching, you can just go around swishing your net and grabbing all kinds of different creatures. There's a fishing minigame, which is more involved than the Animal Crossing one, and I actually I like it a lot more than Animal Crossing fishing, because in this game, it feels like an actual game. The fish will be pulling in different directions, and you have to pull with it, and you have to keep an eye on your line tension so it doesn't snap. It's not overly complicated. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy, but it's something more than just, you know, press A to catch fish, as in Animal Crossing. So that's much appreciated. I, I, <laughs> I quite like that. So the animal people themselves uh, do lack a little bit of personality and charm, but they're pretty cool. You, you know, you'll have your favourites, I dare say. They're not, um, like, super invasive. They don't get up in your face. You don't get them knocking on your door trying to come in like they do in Animal Crossing, which is actually much appreciated. Most of the time, the animals just sort of wander around the town. You can talk to them, sometimes take missions from them. So you can go and do things for them, and they'll reward you, usually with clothing. You can also send them out on missions, which is really very much appreciated. Later on in the game, as you unlock more stuff, you'll gain the ability to send the animal people out on errands, which is where you can tell them what material you want, which includes some pretty rare stuff. You can ask them for diamonds, gold... Um, you can ask them for chalk. I don't know if I've missed something, but I don't know where you get chalk from <laughs> in the main game for yourself. But I send my animal people out for chalk, and they bring it back for me after three days, so that's good. Uh, oh, it's worth mentioning as well, There's the day-night cycle in this game is automatic. Uh, time passes in this game very quickly. It's not... Animal Crossing works on real time. So if it's morning in the real world, it's real. it's morning in Animal Crossing. In this game, not so. It's got its own day and night cycle, um, and if you want it to be tomorrow, you can just sleep in your bed in the game and you'll wake up in the next day. So that, I again, I quite like that. You can speed this on if you want. You can speed run this if you want. I kind of did. <laughs> I got through this very, very quickly. Um, it's designed to be played at a very relaxed pace, but if you do want to, to speed through it, you totally can. The game divvies out... Uh, advancements based on a kind of uh, Nook Miles system. It's called the the Mayor Merit system, I think. And basically, it just rewards you for doing certain things, like planting a certain number of trees, uh, running a certain distance, and things like that. Uh, of course, you can check it at any time. It's very strict. You do have to do precisely the things it wants you to do in precisely the order it wants you to do them. But you can uh, you can do things for later merits sooner, and they'll just unlock once you're ready to unlock them. 
Uh, and they give you all kinds of new stuff. Uh, it's it's almost like cheats. Some of them, some of them increase like the the range that you can pull up plants. So you can pull up all the plants in a, in a certain area all at once and stuff like that. It's really it's really quite powerful once you've got toward the end of the game. The world itself, you get a certain amount of space in which to build. Um, there are unlockable areas. There's a beach with areas to build on it as well. Um, you can move houses and anything that you build whatsoever really easily. I mean, literally, you walk up to a house, press Y um, to interact with it, I think, and then just move it. Uh, you have, with houses, you have to unlock the ability to move them, actually, to be fair. But once you do, I think you press L, and it just becomes an object that you're carrying, and you can just plonk it down wherever you want. You can rotate them 360 degrees smoothly as well. They don't, there is a snap option, but you can rotate these things in any direction. The camera doesn't rotate, so you can't... If you build a house facing north, you can't turn the camera south to look at the house. There is that, but um, that doesn't matter really. Just maybe don't do that though, it make it hard to find the door. But yeah, I like the fact that you can really customise this place a lot more than Animal Crossing in that regard. You can't, however, uh, again, I'm going to keep comparing this to Animal Crossing. I'm really sorry. It's just it's so similar to that. It's, it's hard not to. Animal Crossing does eventually allow you to do things like build hills and, uh, you know, cliffs, and it, it lets you dig new rivers and put in water and all that stuff. This isn't that powerful. You can't do that, uh, as far as I know, anyway. Uh, but you can change the layout of the houses. You can put in anything you want, really. Floors. If you can think of it, you can build it, and if you can build it, you can put it in your town. So, there is a farm uh, that you unlock, which is very much like Harvest Moon. It's all covered in garbage when you first arrive, and you have to clear it out, and then you can start ploughing and watering and producing plants. This is actually like a whole game in and of itself. If you want a farming simulator, that's actually kind of packaged in here. You do have to unlock it, it's a, it's a little way in, but it's, it's worth doing for sure. Uh, you'll have to do a bit of mining in order to get the required materials to build your hoe and watering can. But again, as I say, these things can be unlocked fairly easily. I mentioned mining. There is a multi-level mine that gets darker as you go in. You start off having to build these uh, lantern posts so that you can see, and then later you'll unlock a mining helmet, which you can use. You can just wear, and you'll be able to see much easier in the dark. Again, mining pretty straightforward, really. It's I wouldn't have said it's that fun, but it's uh, it's okay. You get there is a mini map that you can toggle on and off once you've unlocked it, and that can be used to help you navigate in the dark as well. Mining's okay. Uh, it's satisfying certainly. You will have to do a lot of material gathering in this game, so keep that in mind. It's a bit grindy, but then you know so was Animal Crossing. The main reason you're going to want to do a lot of uh, grinding for materials, however, is for the crafting system. So the crafting system is very, very in-depth in this game, and I'd say it's the main USP for this game. Crafting in this game is really, really good. So there's basic crafting, which is like Animal Crossing, where you can just go to a table. You can't build a cra crafting bench anyway, you have to go to this one building, but that's fine. You can teleport to it. Inside the building, you've got a couple of different crafting benches. One for creating very small things, uh, entirely from prefabricated uh, recipes, um, so tools and things like that, and some very basic bits and bobs. And then there's a bigger crafting desk where you can build bigger things, like uh, uh, staircases, the bridge, things like that. But you can customise any of them any way you want. Absolutely, completely any way you want. And you can create new things from scratch. And when I say you create them from scratch, I mean literally this game gives you an empty board onto which you can place solid objects. It gives you, you, can, you have to unlock them, to, to be fair, but you can get all these different prefab shapes and you can deform them, squish them, pull them any way you want layer them up, paint them all different colours, and voila, you've got an object which you can save, and then you can plonk it in your town. You can put it in your house, you can put it in the town itself, you can give them purposes. You can build things that can be interacted with as wardrobes. You can build things that can be treated as tables or as chairs. You know, it's very, very robust, and it's brilliant fun to work with. I'd like more people to play this and do this, because... Um, the creativity that you would see on offer would be enormous. As it is, there is a pretty decent little community already playing this game that are producing uh, scenery. And you can access that by going to the train station where you start the game, buying a ticket for 50 coin, which is cheap, 
and going to the city where you can access the internet, um, the internet capability of the game, and you can actually have a look at this hotel and this showroom that will let you view different people's creations. There's competitions uh, each week or each month, I think, uh, where they'll give you a theme and people compete to build the best of whatever they've been asked to create, and then you can uh, you can f download for free any of the things they've built. I've got a few of them in my town. Um, but I've also built my own stuff. Uh, as you can see, I've got Jurassic Park all over the place. I've built my own little park gates and my own little jeep. They're not brilliant. They're a bit hokey, but they're here. If, you, if you're playing the game and you want some Jurassic Park scenery, I've put them in my little shop. Um, I'll put the code up for my shop. So that's all I'm going to say for Hocko Life. I wanted to keep this as brief as possible. It's one of those games that's quite large in terms of the various things that are available. Um, I could talk, there's so much that I haven't talked about, you know, the, the things like the way you can build houses, uh, lots of different types of houses, most of the ones you've seen in my town all look the same, but you can actually get lots of different ones, you can decorate their walls, uh, you can, moving people into a house is so easy, you just walk up to it, press X and choose someone, you, you kind of queue up people, it's not like Animal Crossing where, you, you know, you have to have a plot available and there's this whole negotiation thing that has to happen, in this one, pretty much people just show up at the, at the bar near the entrance to the town, you talk to them, that puts them on the list, and then anytime you've got a building available, or even if there isn't a building available, just walk up to it and press X and just choose who you want to move in, if there's someone already in there, they're instantly replaced, they just gone and the new person's in. There's, there's a few other things, there are shops in town um, that you can buy stuff from, there's a fashion store, uh, all that good stuff. I guess it comes down to would I recommend it. You can probably tell from my tone that I have enjoyed my time with Hocko Life. It is fun. Uh, it's a cool little game. Uh, I would emphasize that you should go into it bearing in mind that this isn't a big budget sort of huge Animal Crossing-esque thing, but if you are, uh, probably by now you've got a bit of Animal Crossing fatigue, you've had enough of the game, um, and you're looking for something new. If you're looking for something similar, then I would definitely recommend Hocko Life. It's, it's got a more budget price, because it's a more budget game, so it's, it's probably more welcoming in that regard as well. And there's a lot of fun to be had in it. I suppose one of the best things about Animal Crossing was always the beginning bit, when you start off and you build everything up, because it's a bit more gamey then, you know, you're actually working towards things, you aren't just sort of kicking around trying to find things to do, and Hocko Life's a bit like that. Um, although Hocko Life is much more gamey, because you do have very distinct things to work towards. Uh, but you can do so completely at your own pace, you're much more in control in Hocko Life, and I like that quite a lot. So if that sounds appealing to you, then I would say it's worth a go, but yeah, I, I would recommend it. I enjoyed it, and uh, I think it's quite a fun and, yeah, I will say charming little game. I know I've, I've heard people criticise the visuals, especially the animal people, but they grew on me. They did. I think they're quite fun. I like them. I like that they're a bit weird. They're a bit uncanny. I, f I just think that suits the this world where you're a human surrounded by weird anthropomorphic animal people that seem to just be cool with it that you're there, you a human, um, and it's never addressed or explained. By the way, with Hocko Life, you arrive on a train and you fell asleep and then you wake up and you don't know how you got here and there's a bit later on where somebody comes into the bar, one of the people that you can move in and they say the same thing, they're like, it's weird, I'm sure I bought a ticket to the city but when I woke up I was here. I'm convinced that these people are dying, I think this is the afterlife, <laughs> I think that you died on the train and that's and you've pulled up in this surreal limbo, that's what's going on here. But whatever your headcanon is, yeah, if you fancy it, give it a go, it's a, recommend a recommendation from me. So, anyway. That was Hocko Life. I hope you found this uh, video interesting, educational, <laughs> entertaining. I don't know. I have fun filming it. So thanks for watching. Chuck a like or a subscribe or whatever you do with YouTube. I don't really care. Just have fun and bye. <laughs>